So we're solving um, the housing crisis here on HQLA. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be uh, talking about a technology that I think is really cool. This is going to be a guessing game, so don't look at my screen. Not looking. Um, so I think this is um, a really interesting, exciting opportunity. I think it was exciting seven to ten years ago, um, and I think the hype around it has actually really died down right. um, in the amount of people that are talking about it. Okay. Um, but I actually think it shouldn't have, and I think that the technology has actually continued to develop um, since that time oh. um, because it's actually really cool. Okay. Um, it's are not we, VCR. Are, are we talking about David Bonzo's favorite thing? <laughs> well, um, at the moment, uh, there's a bit of a rental crisis, right, yeah. um, around Sydney. You with, didn't answer um, my question. <laughs> we are, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Sp- <laughs> you don't guess yet, all right? Don't guess yet. Okay, so <laughs> at the moment, um, that's not a reference that you can look up. By the way, that's someone that was one of our teachers. Um, <laughs> at the moment, there's a bit of a rental crisis. Um, so particularly around Sydney, um, with multiple areas that have massive rents. Uh, so the average Sydney rent as of yes. um, March 2023. Yep. Guess the weekly figure. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, okay. All right. All right. I got this. Uh, Sydney average rent, weekly rent is going to be $650. Oh, very good guess. So the number that I pulled, and that actually might be correct by now, but uh, okay. the number that I pulled was from early March, um, $630 a week. Oh, okay, great. So very, I honestly, I honestly didn't read all of anything. Very bang on. Um, so in 1955, a house in Box Hill in Sydney was, um, oh, about, so that's where I live. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I do. Well, this is in Sydney. But, but in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> So a house in Box Hill was um seven thousand dollars in um and in nineteen <laughs> house? Yeah. Um wait, what year? In nineteen fifty five. Okay. <laughs> You're missing half I the story here. <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> um in nineteen seventy the median house price was twenty eight thousand dollars in okay. um in Sydney. Um today the median house price in Sydney um in total is 1.4 million wow. with the median unit price at 748k. Crazy. Um, so what mm. am I talking about here? I'm talking about a technology that has helped create both cannelloni and rocket parts. You have to guess. Pretty amazing. That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your, that, was, that was your one. So I wrote here that that was your one last chance to guess before I give it away. <laughs> I like that you wrote that. Okay. <laughs> But um, obviously, you could have guessed at any point there. Thank you. Um, so what am I talking about? I'm actually talking about 3D printed houses. Okay. This is really interesting. So one of the most expensive parts about building a house is... Um, building it. Is building it, yeah. <laughs> one of the most expensive <laughs> parts about building a house is uh, labor. Is the house itself. Yeah, the house, yeah. And all of the things are associated with building it. Well, actually, so what I was going to say Sorry. was labor. Um, and I would argue that the majority of the cost actually comes down to that uh, labor and materials. Okay. Um, so sure, the land's worth something there, but um, it definitely depends on the area. Um, sometimes the land's worth um, the majority. Um, usually the land's worth um, a small Yep. No, um, I get your point here. Yep. Um, but overall, I think this method could save a lot on the labor and the materials. Um, so there's this really cool company called Icon, and they've built seven homes for the homeless in Austin. Um, and they built a few full house projects that they've sold uh, as well. And so their method is that there's a 3D printer that's shipped out. It's assembled by four people in an hour. Um, and the 3D printer is... Um, whoa, whoa. So, hang on. Oh, okay. So they assemble the 3D printer. They ship it to the site. Yeah. Um, four people assemble the... The 3D printer, um, not 3D the house. Printer. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they you have it four it. hours. They assemble it in one hour. One hour, sorry, yeah, um, four people, one hour. And then uh, what the 3D printer is, essentially this structure that operates like a bit of a crane in a container yard. So picture four pillars um, with a central piece that can move on an X and Y axis anywhere um, within those four pillars. So they would set up those four pillars on the four corners of the um, concrete slab that's been laid. And um, Well, I'm just visualizing just literally a large... 3D printer. Like I've seen the small ones. Yeah. It's just a big version of that, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And it just moves around. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I've got I've got you. Um so basically, um, yeah, it's placed on the four corners and um and the central piece can be moved around anywhere over that slab. And so the central piece is connected to a tube, um, and out of the tube comes concrete. Um, really? And so yeah, so it's this This is interesting. So each of the companies that is doing this is um is layering out uh, so like they own, they all have painted of this idea. Well, they all have all the companies that are in the space have a unique material, uh, which they've, uh, um, uh, generated yeah. themselves. Okay. 
Um, so I'll go into a few of the materials later. Um, but this concrete is laid out according to um, the design from that's in the in the computer of the printer. Yep, yep. Um, and so the first layer is about 10 centimeters high, and the printer moves around the job site doing that first layer. Ah, all the walls and things like that. Yeah, and yeah, so yep. it's got all those um, that yep. layout in mind, yep. and then it starts coming back and spitting out the next layer of concrete on yep. top of that um, until obviously it's um, it's done. And yes. this saves a lot of labor because one person can supervise the process, make sure that it's working properly, stop it if it needs to be stopped. And it's more of a programmer project manager role than it is of a um, traditional construction role because he has to highly and, skilled though exactly so one highly skilled person has versus maybe a large number of lesser skilled people that's right and so he has to go and make sure that it's working know exactly how the printer works know how the hardware and the software works to try and correct issues uh, on the go um but at the same time that's going to be better than 50 people that are all on the side at the same yeah, time yeah yeah it sounds um, fantastic yeah so uh, basically the designs actually look really nice so their show, showcase home is called house zero Okay. Um, and it really shows off what they can do with this method. So, Is there a maximum size? Obviously, the answer is yes to that, surely. Uh, you would think so. So I would say probably. Um, okay. But this is a pretty big um, Solid answer. house. So, well, I'm, well you, can move, you can move it around. A solid probably. <laughs> a solid probably. I guess you can move it around. Um, oh, it's so a different sections. I would say oh, if you really yeah. wanted to. So probably no, no end to what your imagination can um, think. Emphasis on the probably. If there's a probably no end to what your imagination <laughs> can. <laughs> um, so, um, so one thing that took me by surprise is it's not a hundred percent three D printed. So I kind of my original reservation was that oh, it has to all be made with the three D printer um, because it's three D printed. Yeah. Um, and then I thought about that and I'm like, wait, that's that's kind of a dumb thought because um, oh, thank you. Um, because why would you take the um, why wouldn't you take the best of what three D printing could do and combine it with the best of what um, current houses today are doing. Um, so you take the low, co the low cost and the efficiency and you mix that with the great design work um, and other pieces of materials that look great. So I have this, a couple of images of House Zero here. So I'll show you. Okay, I'll the, have a look. Here we go. Um, here we go. Oh, oh, wow. I was not expecting this. So this is the, in. basically this is the exterior. So I was, I was expecting something like Roblox style. Yeah, so they've or made... like Minecraft or something. They've essentially made a series of, so there's a straight wall through the middle. There's a series of, Curved walls. If you're watching this at home, you know, I was actually explaining some of the uh, images here if you're just listening That's to That's right. So basically, um, each of these is a glass panel between uh, oh. these three concrete pillar areas. These are the three concrete pillar areas, and it makes up this great living space. Wow. So in this far end, there's a study uh, little nook. What an incredible In this house. one, there's a, there's a hanging out living area. In yeah. this next one, there's a dining one. Yeah. Um, over here, there's like the kitchen and it's all this wood paneling that they've mixed with the 3D printed concrete. Yes. And as you can see, the layers actually do look quite nice. Oh, it looks amazing. Um, yeah. And then on the other side, you've got bedrooms and, um, yep. and a whole other use of mixed spaces. Oh, look at the texture that the uh, 3D design, uh, 3D printing makes. Exactly. So it's this really interesting concrete texture. And basically, uh, so what they've done In what is, country do they do this? Well, this is in the US. In the US, um, right. And so they're operating in Austin at the moment. And so they made seven much smaller designs for um, homeless people, which are all um, in that kind of style. Yes. Um, in and that style? Yeah. And they've... Um, oh, my gosh. And, so, and then they've made four of those houses um, that are uh, sold originally. So what you'll see is that they've, they've used really good looking pieces of wood um, in the interior. Um, and they actually have a lot of the walls in the bedroom areas that are kind of covered by wooden cabinetry. Ah, uh, yep. Um, it's not are, all exposed, that texture. Yeah. And would, are, you'd get a bit over it. Yeah, And yeah. there are absolutely, there are a lot of large glass windows. And so what it really looks like is kind of 30% of the bedrooms sort of area are in that texture. And as well as that, they were saying, well, you can cover it up with plaster as well. Totally. It's just like the structure of the house. Yeah. It's just um, the framing. You can think of it as the framing of the house. Exactly. Because not everyone has exposed brick in their house. Like not everyone wants that. Um, but and some so, people do. Exactly. And so you can have areas of exposed brick. You can have areas of not. Um, but in this case, it's areas of um, exposed 3D printed concrete, which actually makes a really nice. It looks like a really cool texture. It does. It's a little inconsistent, which is kind of cool because it um, has those. Uh, areas that sort of jut out a little. Yeah, um, it, it, well, that's right. And nature, it kind of feels natural 
more so than man-made because, you know, nature's inherently kind of like random and abstract. Exactly. And that's what it feels like. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So cool. made a really interesting, I really like that um, concept, the open living um, areas yeah. and... Um, no, it's very cool. And all that. Um, and so obviously you've still got the rest of the build to do after that. You know, yes. you've got the, the, um, the finishes, the electrical, the plumbing. Um, the only all... downside is it takes 16 years to build each house and they cost $40 million. <laughs> no, so, well... <laughs> The idea is that um, it's actually cheaper to um, 3D print. Um, so another company that's doing this is in Germany. Um, yeah. They're called Perry. Uh, Ooh. And so they recently had its first um, 3D printed home that passed all the building code regulations there. Yep. yep. Um, and basically that's a scaffolding company with a research and development department, which oh, is wow. almost more interesting than the fact that they're doing 3D printed <laughs> yeah. homes because <laughs> it's funny that they have an R&D be nice to know who that person heading up the department is. You know, that's a that's a pretty innovative person who's doing that. Oh, exactly. Um, so they've produced a three a two story house with 160 meters squared of living space. That is something I struggle to conceptualize when someone says square meters of a house. Mm. Like people talk about it a lot with apartments, and people go, "Whoa, that's massive!" Or "Whoa, that's so small!" And I'm like, I literally can't gauge that. It's a small house and a lot. That sounds apartment. like a lot. This is like a hundred and something. I'm like, I'm thinking like, "Whoa, yeah. that's like a football field." It's a small house. But it's not. It's a large apartment. So our apartment is 140. Um, so that's how you... Uh, Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, my future apartment is 1,000. Um, <laughs> and uh, it'll feature... Have you seen, have you seen the... Um, this is a tangent, but okay. in New York City, the $250 million apartment um, that's on top of... No, I haven't. It's not this obnoxious guy with the gray hair. Yeah, that's that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy on YouTube, um, Ryan. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. He wears the suits and he, he jumps in the pools with the suit on. With the stuff suit like on. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's great. So, yeah, it looks like uh, they were using the same method there with the 3D printer operating like a large crane yes. um, situation. Um, there's also Mighty Buildings um, times the Polari Group. So this is a combo um, <laughs> okay. on um, YouTube right. that I found. Nice. Um, so this is basically a project where... Are they based somewhere? Yes. So they're based in Coachella. Um, well, they're doing this project in Coachella. Oh, no, um, no, Coachella is. Valley. Okay. Um, it's at Palm Springs in... Palm Springs. Um, you know the Coachella Festival? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's in Coachella. Yeah. So basically they're taking a few steps further. This is a collaboration. Um, so they're aiming to do the world's first zero net energy 3D printed homes. So the main difference um, is that they're prefabricating their houses in a warehouse and shipping them. Um, so they can make a full tiny home instead of doing the construction. Not in so, concrete, I assume. So I would call it more of manufacturing. And um, their actual unique um, A friend of ours is doing this. Yeah, so they have their own patented type of material as well. Yeah, it would have to be quite light, but also quite rigid. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's that's what you would have to look for. That have to be cheap. Yeah. yeah. It's like some kind of stone, um, I think. Oh, really? So it's like some kind of stone that they've made um, to, as their own little patented um, material. Um, so here's the reason behind it. Um, in 2021 and 2022, this is why it's going to solve the housing crisis. We saw a huge increase in the cost of lumber as there were supply shortages. Yes, that's right. So the cost of wood seemed to be going up uh, at least 40% a year. That's right. We had a friend who was building decks at that point and he was complaining about the issue of having to... Well, we were running it... Sorry, this is a tangent, but it's interesting. We were running a website for him and it was an, we were, we, we, we'd created an automatic quotation tool that allowed customers to come on and quote up their own decks. And he had to continue to get us to inc or add a multiple uh, onto the number at the end to continue to you know, yeah. allow for this crisis. Yeah, that's right. And so we had to keep marking up the price of wood. Um, and so, you know, we've got our own experience with this. That's right. Um, so there's actually a random length lumber futures market on the Chicago Merchantile oh. Exchange, oh. Yeah, um, which, was, worms. which was up um, 236% from its um, trough to peak in May 2021. Okay. Um, so the CME is the largest derivatives exchange for context there um, in the world. Um, and uh, essentially, that's a futures market. So... Um, the derivative on the wood, everyone was so fearful of this price increasing that they marked it up by that much. What's the future of the industry? So Dubai wants to 3D print one quarter of its new buildings by 2030. Every building? Yeah, a quarter of its new buildings. What about um, like a skyscrapers? I don't know. It just wants to. Um, it's, that's their plan. I oh, they want I to. They're not going to do it. Well, that's In the same their, way that I want a private jet. Well, they, they plan. They, that's what <laughs> their plan is. Um, but I think they can actually do it because... They seem to just do things 
um, like crazy at crazy scale. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, like building Dubai in the and the shortest amount of time and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, what are what are the few of the issues that they have to get past first? So strict construction requirements. Um, so some of the systems in place might not pass regulations in every country. Um, various, no, totally. Various weather conditions. Um, well, yeah, Dubai, incredibly tumultuous weather conditions. Yeah. Well, so one of the issues um, was that constructions. Um, the German one had some pictures of, or one of the European ones had some pictures of um, a site covered in scaffolding, which had a huge gazebo over the project. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so it had all of this um, okay. sheeting up like this giant oh, tent. Okay. I was thinking about weather conditions after building the actual house and as to oh. how it would actually withstand them. Well, it's essentially concrete. Yeah, okay. Um, you make a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are also different uh, materials. So I think con concrete seems to be the main consensus. Yep. Um, but not everyone just wants a, a gray printed um, concrete house. No. Um, and I'm not sure how sustainable it is. Um, that's something to think about. So good for, um, but it is good for insulation. Um, yeah. I think it's re relatively sustainable. But yeah. Um, yeah, like it sounds like you might need to use less energy for heating, cooling, et cetera. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good thing, I suppose. Um, yeah. And the, the material itself. Um, and one of the other issues is that the technology is obviously very expensive. So there's this website called um, Aniwa with two A's, um, and that actually lists out the cost of each of the 3D printers. Um, oh. So they have 13 different models from 13 different companies that are doing this, okay. um, and they're all different specs. I wouldn't have thought and they, there'd be 13 companies doing this already. Well, it? it is interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, so it basically says that they can cost anything between 180k and $1 million. Oh, that's much cheaper than I thought it would be. Yeah, so it like isn't a, bad. a builder could buy that. Like anyone that you would do within your day-to-day -day work environment. Yeah. Well, like you would be dealing with people who could buy this thing. Exactly, yeah. Um, not that I do anything for work. Um, they, um, <laughs> I'm a podcaster. Um, that's my... That's my so I'm dealing with you every day, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I could I could deal with someone that can afford it, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like in this case, you need the 3D printer and you need the truck to get it there, and you need um, the materials and um, and everything. But still, it's um, it's definitely it could be an overall um, net benefit. Okay. So in saying all of that, this method of construction could bring down the construction cost by twenty to forty percent. Um, so in one area of France, a local university did some research um, and worked out that the average construction cost of a full-sized single-family home uh, could be built in this area for two hundred thirty-two thousand dollars in twenty eighteen. Right, so that was um, USD. Um, and then they worked out that this was a three D printed home, um, and that was twenty percent less than that's the cost to construct a same house um, by traditional methods, single-family okay. home. Gotcha. Um, so that's where you get that percentage from. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's great. Um, my conclusion here is that this is a really cool future idea. Um, it actually seems pretty viable. Yeah, it sounds. It does sound viable. Yeah. Yeah, and it could be a really. We good... haven't spoken about the time it takes to build the house. Do you have that information or not? No. Okay. We're assuming it's quick. Yeah, I would assume it's pretty quick. Yeah, there are a lot of ha like home builders out there. It's a massive industry. Um, construction is gigantic. Oh, here's one for you. How noisy is it when it's building it? I'm not sure. If it's not noisy, can it work 24-7? Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. That's actually a great point. Um, could potentially be a lot faster. Mm. So we've had a, uh, a few different styles. The Icon seems to be the most premium product. Yes, um, that was the initial one you were talking about. Yeah, um, we talked about uh, Perry in Germany. We talked about Mighty Homes. Um, there are, yeah. At Icon least, was Austin. At least 10, yeah. Yeah, yeah Austin in Texas. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different approaches from going from doing it straight to um, doing a prefabricated approach. Um, yeah. Love it. But it's a great idea, I think.